At the end of the day, what we want is an equation of motion describing how these masses will accelerate. Before we jump into solving the problem, there's still a little bit more benefit we can get from doing more thought experiments. Let's think about what happens when M2 is much, much bigger than M1. For example, maybe M2 is a grand piano, and M1 is a slice of apple pie. This is a sort of silly example, but I'm trying to make a somewhat serious point. We can push nature to its limits in our head, and we never have to set up this experiment. We just have to think, what's going to happen? Well, we already know that when M2 is greater than M1, the system accelerates clockwise, of course. The piano pulls more than the pie, of course. In fact, when M2 is so much bigger than M1, we can even estimate its acceleration. So in this situation, I want you to tell me, what do you think is the best estimate for how quickly this piano will accelerate downwards, and therefore how quickly the pie will accelerate upwards? Is it 10, 5, 2, or 1 meter per second squared? And I want you to remember that a free-falling object accelerates downwards at 10 meter per second squared. 